Have you ever fantasized of owning a conventional truck that was entirely imported from America and used to navigate the winding roads of Europe? Well, I'll give you a hint. Even if that were to happen, it would be a difficult challenge. However, it's improbable, but now watch a fascinating video of the highway monster with a snub nose. Today's episode will be a little different. Let's compare the trucks built in America and Europe to see their variations. Why do they have so many variations for a truck that serves the same purpose? Now back to the first exciting thing. What's the unique difference in the front end design of American and European trucks? The front of the tractor is the main visual difference between American and European trucks as the nose of American trucks protrude outward and the nose of European trucks is aligned with the window. The American truck design has an engine section in front of the cabin with a length of 20 feet, allowing for more room inside for sleeping space and amenities. Drivers in the U.S. can drive up to 12 hours every 24 hours and each of their journeys spans more than a thousand miles. So American trucks will design a space at the front of the car so they can live and live for months inside. It has all the amenities including a bed, television, microwave, wardrobe, and refrigerator. Some even have their own toilet. Of course, they can rest at the hotel, but many stops don't have hotels due to the long driveways and the convenient car rest. In the U.S., regulations allow for longer vehicle lengths. A long-nosed cab that places the engine out in front tends to make the cab quieter. The long wheelbase of the cab gives a somewhat smoother ride. However, the greatest benefit of a conventional design trailer truck is probably the added safety it provides the driver during a collision. With the engine in front of the driver, much of the impact will be taken by the engine, thus protecting the driver to a greater degree compared to a cab over engine model. In contrast, European truck drivers can't live in their truck. The first is due to design of the cabin sitting above the engine with a length of fewer than 10 feet, so there's no space to rest. But moreover, European drivers can only drive nine hours every 24 with a maximum journey of 700 miles. So resting in the truck is unnecessary. Besides, as part of an EU reform, truck drivers were banned from spending their 45 hour weekly rest period in the cab of the truck. If they cannot be at home, they have to spend it in a hotel or guest house. And there are penalties for drivers who violate the regulation. For example, in Germany, you're fined up to $60 for each hour of illegal parking for the driver and $180 for the carrier for each hour. And in France, both driver and carrier can get a year in prison and a fine of $30,000, which is a very high fine. On top of that, regulations demand somewhat shorter vehicles in Europe to maximize cargo capacity, cab size is minimized. Because of different purposes, they have different designs to suit. If drivers in Europe own cars with a long nose, they're not allowed to use amenities because of working hours and government regulations don't allow it. And because owner-operators are rare and hours on the road are shorter, European trucks don't require large sleeper cabins or living space. But the shorter cabin also creates a shorter wheelbase, which improves handling. Why is there a difference in truck size between these two regions? Well, as mentioned earlier, Stricter regulations in Europe make for different trucks. For starters, a European semi-truck can only be 18.75 meters or 61 feet, but American trucks can tow multiple trailers at a time. Because of these restrictions, European trucks have to be smaller so they can tow more cargo. Considering American cabs that can be up to 20 feet long, that only leaves 40 feet for cargo, and the cab over engine of a European truck allows for the cab itself to be less than 10 feet long. In addition to the above factors, the design of these two different types of vehicles differs primarily due to the road. What distinguishes the roads in Europe and America then? Well, Europe has an interstate system, but the roads are windier and the lanes are more narrow. That's why it's crucial the truck can navigate skinny city streets and a cab over design makes that possible. They also don't need massive engines, since semi-trucks in Europe are limited to 55 miles per hour. Thus, European trucks are more compact and easier to transport. The opposite's true of the long roads of the Americas. Much of an American truck's life is spent on the interstate system where lanes are vast and the roads are straight, so the front end was designed wide. 
we can immediately picture the Tesla Semi, which has a stunning front fascia and clean, uncluttered cab construction, which adds a unique identity to the electric truck. One of the first things you'll probably look at is the front end, which unlike a traditional gas-powered trucks that have these massive grills to maximize airflow to an engine, these have a blanked off nose with a pointed shape that maximizes airflow around the truck. The second reason is the regulation of vehicle length. In North America, length regulation does not restrict the total length similarly, 75 feet maximum length. In Europe, all lengths, depending on the truck-trailer combination and depending on the country, are measured from the most forward point to the most rearward point of the whole vehicle, usually no more than 65 feet long. This is the reason why in Europe the cabs are the more compact so-called cab over engine or COE type. And in North America, they're more of the conventional type with a hood. In terms of aerodynamics, a conventional truck is aerodynamically better than a COE which means the American truck has better aerodynamics than the European truck. It's impossible not to mention trucks belonging to the leading company in global technology, Packard. Their new trucks feature a new aerodynamic design, 10% greater fuel efficiency, and a larger interior space. In Europe, semi-trucks are limited to 90 kilometers per hour, but in some places in the U.S., trucks go 129 to 137 kilometers per hour. And that is where better aerodynamics and a longer wheelbase help a lot. Third, why is there a difference in artistry and appearance between the American and European truck? Well, Americans like big, powerful things. They own pickups because they're the ultimate union between the things they love the most, utility and freedom. You can race or mud your pickup. You can start your own business or move your entire home with a full bed and a trailer hitch and you can pitch a tent in the bed and go truck camping. Pickup trucks embody the American dream. But what about the aesthetics of European cars? Well, Europe is aiming for neat, durable, and good use. In Europe, almost every maker of vans also makes a platform version of their vehicle. They're widely used with construction firms, plumbers, roofers, gardeners, and craftsmen of all kinds. There's one very big reason for not seeing many pickups in Europe. Nobody uses such a car as a private car for hobby or leisure. They're almost exclusively used for commercial purposes. So they're used as tools, not as cars. And the number of self-employed craftsmen who may be willing to use their transporter tool also as an everyday car, it's very limited. Because of the different cultures, concepts, and preferences, Americans and Europeans will focus on producing a car model with an appearance that meets their needs. Fourth, what advantages do European trucks have compared to American trucks in terms of waterway transportation? In Europe, major commercial activities usually take place by sea, like the Channel, Irish Sea, North Sea, etc. And Europe needs to transport trucks through canals and oceans, so the front end is snub-nosed to give more room to accommodate a larger number of vehicles on the ferry. For example, according to GetLink, the company which operates the Channel Tunnel, 1.64 million trucks traveled between the UK and the EU using the crossing last year. Eurotunnel owns a fleet of 18 shuttle trains designed to carry trucks. Each shuttle train is 2,443.6 feet long, and it's capable of carrying up to 38 trucks with a length of 64.3 feet each, traveling at a speed of 140 kilometers per hour. Supposedly, American trucks are also engaged in maritime operations. With a minimum length of 71 feet, a ferry of the same size can carry only 34 trucks. Therefore, the European front design with a snub nose means the European truck can hold more than four units. And fifth, why do European heavy trucks have their exhaust at the bottom, or North American trucks have it at the top? European trucks are almost always COEs, that's cab over engine vehicles, that have no hoods because the cab is over the engine compartment. And the reason primarily is for maneuverability challenges in these very old towns with tight roads. Keeping the exhaust underneath keeps the vehicle length shorter and therefore able to make tighter turns. Running the exhaust horizontally would probably be cost effective and space saving. Unlike trucks in Europe, trucks in North America, as a general rule, have a hood over the engine with the cab behind it our roads and cities tend to have a wider road and easier turns. 
so hence for many years it's been common to see vertical exhaust stacks on these trucks in North America. For many years trucks here had exhaust stacks just behind the driver door and the shift was made to put them behind the cab for better aerodynamic and less exhaust noise near the driver. It then went from dual exhaust stack to a single exhaust stack. The change to active after treatment systems also eliminated most dual exhaust systems. Fairly recently, the trend has been to go to a horizontal exhaust system that exhausts at the bottom as well. That eliminates a heavy bracket required for vertical mounts so they're lighter weight. That allows the cab and trailer to be as close as possible for optical aerodynamics and they cost less since there's fewer material for the OEM to purchase. Now observe where the exhaust pipes are situated on your truck if you own one and tell us how helpful they are when they're placed there. Sixth, what would be the better choice of brakes between American and European trucks? Brakes appear as one of the crucial factors when considering specifications of heavy duty trucks. A lot of individuals get confused between disc and drum brakes and we'll give you the difference shortly. But first, American trucks use drum brakes, and in a drum brake, there's nine to 12 moving parts. Drum brakes are cheaper than disc brakes. It doesn't mean you have to keep drum brakes on your truck. Besides, drum brakes have some problems like wet weather performance issues, rust and maintenance difficulties due to inaccessibility and corrosion issues. Drum brakes are also more prone to failure than disc brakes. When the drum brake fails, it can be hard to fix the drum by resurfacing. Oftentimes, the only option is to replace the drum. That's a big surprise expense many drivers can't afford. Different from American trucks, European trucks use disc brakes. Discs are better at managing and dispersing heat than drum brakes. That means they experience less brake fade than drum brakes and offer a more consistent performance. That's because the disc is closer to the pad and expands even when the calipers are relaxed. It can even impact how to adjust disc brakes in the future. For many truck owners, disc brakes are a better option due to less maintenance. This feature ensures longer life. However, disc brakes are generally more expensive than drum brakes and therefore impact the price of the vehicle, especially new ones. For those on a tight budget, drum brakes may be a more accessible option. Seventh, why is the number of truck drivers rising in the Americas yet falling in Europe? The American Trucking Association estimates that 80,000 more drivers are needed to make up a shortage in America this year, and a shortfall of 160,000 truckers will exist by 2030. In 2019, 72% of all freight in the U.S. was hauled on a truck, and right now, with a shortage of truck drivers, freight is being backed up at the ports. The shortage of drivers isn't new, but with the rubber band supply and demand of the pandemic, distributors are struggling to keep up. But with this shortage, now's a better time than ever to become a truck driver with job security and pay around 70,000 a year. And that wage is without a doubt the main factor. The pay rate doesn't translate to Europe where truck drivers are actually paid low wages. In fact, while their trucking industry isn't nearly as large as the US, their shortage is. Currently, European truckers demand higher wages with their salaries around $40,000 significantly lower than the U.S. 90% of currently employed truck drivers won't be in those jobs anymore. The truck driver shortage isn't necessarily a case of too few drivers, it's that too many are leaving. Many truckers are quitting because of low pay combined with difficult working conditions. Truck drivers can spend days at a time behind the wheel of their truck, spending nights in gas station parking lots or on the side of the road. Thus, the physical toll of no exercise, poor diet, and an extended period of no bathroom breaks makes truck driving a difficult job to say the least. While many truck drivers make a decent living, it often isn't enough to make the problematic aspect of the job worth it, and they quit when it gets to be too much. With a shortage of truckers, shipping times are going up, and chances are the package you're waiting for is stuck on a boat. So the next time you order something, no matter where you live, think about the trucker who's getting it too. So we've just gone over some of the differences of the trucks in Europe and America. However, have you questioned whether American trucks can operate on European roads or vice versa? Well, let's respond to this quickly. Poor you, this is very challenging. Forget it until the truck was more than 25 years old. The modifications you'd need to carry out would make it uneconomic, despite the fact that the UK truck has all the safety features a U.S. truck has, 
just done in a way that doesn't have USDOT approval stickers, plating, or engravings. Even then, it wouldn't be legal to use as a truck. And much the same applies to U.S. trucks in the U.K. They can't be used as tractor units. Although people can import them for personal use as a non-commercial vehicle or for conversion to recovery vehicles. However, if it was intended that the UK truck was to be re-exported within one year, you'd probably be able to temporarily import it. If you didn't export it before the year was up, you could find US Customs seizing it for destruction, assuming they found it. You'd also be subject to prosecution. How bad it is. Recently, all the information about the difference between the trucks of the America and Europe regions, along with the answers to the questions we received from the audience, do you own a truck? Let us know how you feel about using them. And finally, don't hesitate to leave your comments below if you have any thoughts about the contents of the episode. And if you found today's video interesting, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, tap the bell icon, and share the video. We hope to see you again soon.